Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. This is my first tutorial in 2024. In this video we're going to create a basketball from start to finish in Blender. So if you are a beginner in Blender you should follow along this video without any problems. Let's go into it. Okay, select the cube, X and delete it. Go with Shift A, Mesh, UV Sphere. From here we're going to increase the segments into 16. Just like that. One on back to front view. Go with Alt Z to switch into X-ray mode. Tab to switch into the edit mode. Select all these vertices. Hit X and delete them. Alt Z to switch back into solid mode. Tap to object mode. Go to modifiers, add modifier, mirror modifier. We're gonna go ahead and activate the mirror modifier just on the Z axis. And of course, don't forget to activate clipping. All right. In the edit mode, select this vertex, X and delete it. By holding shift, you can select vertices just like that. Or select this vertex, hold control, click on this one. Now hold shift, select this one. Again, hold control and click on this one. Cool, cool. Go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and search for loop tools add-on. Turn on this add-on and save your preferences from here. Go with mouse right click, loop tools, bridge. Or go with Ctrl E, bridge edge loops. As you see guys, you will get the same result. Go with Ctrl R to add a loop cut just right there. Select this vertex, hold shift, select this one, hit M and merge the vertices at center. Select this vertex, hold shift, select this one and go with shift R to repeat the last command. All right, select all these vertices and scale them a bit just like so. By holding Alt mouse left click, we can select a loop just like so. If you like to see the effect on the mirror modifier, go ahead and click on this icon. Now we're gonna go ahead and hold Shift Alt and select all these loops. Go with Ctrl B to bubble. By scrolling the mouse wheel, we can add more loop cuts. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and add just one more loop cut. Again guys, hold Shift Alt and select all these loops. Hit S and scale them a bit, just like so. One last time, Ctrl B and add two more loop cuts right there. All right, go with Ctrl 2 to add a subdivision service modifier. Mouse right click, shade smooth. Okay guys, now we are done with modeling. One on pad to front view. Hit N on the keyboard and go to item menu. As you see guys, this ball is two meter long. We're gonna go ahead and scale the ball down a bit. Now go with GZ to place the ball above the X axis. And that looks fine. Now go with Shift A, Mesh, Plane. It's important to check that the ball touched the ground. Tap to edit mode, two on the keyboard to switch into edge select, select this edge, EZ to extrude along the Z axis. Select this edge, go with Ctrl B and scroll the mouse wheel to add more loop cuts right there. Mouse right click, shade smooth. Okay guys, that looks fine. Now we need to add a camera. Go with Shift A and add a camera. In the viewboard, we're gonna go ahead and find a good position for the camera. When you are done, go with Ctrl Alt Zero Numpad to snap the camera into the regular view. Now hit N, go to view and turn on camera to view. In this way guys, we just snap the camera into our regular view. If you don't know where the camera is, we are looking through the camera right now inside this area. All right, select the ball, hit R twice to rotate freely if you want. Okay guys, I think we are ready to add a simple material for now. Select the ball, by click and drag on the corner here, we can split a new area. Click here and change the editor into shader editor. We can add a new material from here, or we can click here and add a new material. It's the same. Click on new to add a new material. From here, we're gonna go ahead and change the color. And of course, now we can see anything in the viewboard because we are in the solid mode. Okay, let me show you what I prefer to do. I'm gonna go ahead and split a new work area and change the editor into viewboard. Zero numpad to look through the camera. Hit T to disappear the quick menu. And of course, we're gonna go ahead and switch into render view.
This camera is too big for now, I'm gonna go ahead and hit S to scale it down just like so. Alright guys, now we can switch into render setting. I'm gonna go ahead and change the render engine into cycle. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on denoise. So that's good, now we need to light the scene. Go with Shift A, Light, Spotlight. G to move, S to scale, just like so. So this first light is our key light source for our object. We're gonna go ahead and go to light settings and play with the spot size. And from here we're gonna blend the light as we want. That looks good to me. So it's time to choose the right color for our scene. We can do this from here or from the right side corner. For better view I like to turn off all these icons. So now we need to create a second material. Click on the plus button to add a new one. This time we're gonna pick the black color. Now guys, if we switch back into edit mode, we still have all these vertices selected. Make sure to select the black material and hit an assign. And there we go. So simple is that. So maybe you are happy with the render right now, but believe me, we can do more. Okay, select the orange material. By click and drag on the corners, we can close the work areas for now. Should you do that? Of course not, but I prefer to do that. Ok guys, in the shader editor go with shift A, texture, Vernai texture. We're gonna go ahead and connect color into base color. So go ahead and change F1 to smooth F1. And of course you can see suddenly the effect here. Again shift A and search for texture coordinate. Go ahead and connect generated into vector. Again, shift A and search for mapping node. Go ahead and place the mapping node between those. By click and drag, we're gonna change the scale on the X, Y, Z axes into 60. Okay, that looks good. Again, shift A, converter, color ramp. Now guys, from the color ramp node, we need to add a new color. How we can do that? By pressing on the plus button. Mouse left click and drag to move the marker all the way left. We're gonna go ahead and add a new marker. Now we need to move it right. So you can add markers as you like. There are no rules for that. One last step, go with Shift A, Converter and add a new color ramp node. For now we need to change the color into dark orange. Pick the other side and change the color into bright orange. And of course guys, this is a time consuming process, so take your time to get the texture right as you like. From the first color ram node, we're gonna connect the color into roughness. And of course, now we are able to see the reflections on the surface and we can control that from here. Go with Shift A and search for Bump node. We're gonna go ahead and connect color into height and normal into normal. So now we need to increase the strength all the way down. It's important to know guys, there are no magic numbers here. You need to play with that notes to get the hang of it. So that looks good to me and I'm happy with that. 
I'm gonna go ahead and close the shader editor. Mouse left click and drag on the corner here to split a new work area. So for the background, I'm gonna go with a new material and change the color. And of course you can pick the color that you want. Select the spotlight, from here I'm gonna go ahead and play with the radius a little bit. Alright, go with Shift A, Light, Point Light. So we're gonna use this light as a rim light to help separate the object from the background. And of course a rim light is placed behind an object. Change the power a bit and we are ready to go. Go with Shift D to duplicate the light. So I'm gonna use this light as a fill light. So if you don't know what does that mean for now, it's okay. I will create a light tutorial series for beginners in the future. When you are happy with that, hit F2 to render the scene and that's it. See you in the next one.